Hi, I'm Jimmy Butler, and welcome to the Agile Digest, where we have right-sized topics covered in just minutes. Today's topic is measuring early and often. It's about six minutes. Enjoy. So I think there are two key Agile principles, which I summarize like this. Deliver valuable working software early and often. And it notes that our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. You know, we want to deliver working software frequently. So if it really is our highest priority, it stands to reason that we have ways to measure that because that's our measure of success. And so I'm going to show you some ways to take a look at that in this digest. Well, let's take a look at one aspect of what frequent delivery looks like. So you have your product backlog, work's coming in, those things are getting refined, and then the team decides based on priority what it wants to do in the upcoming sprint, and so it builds out its sprint backlog. The sprint gets worked over a period of one to four weeks, and at the end of that sprint, you have working software. And so that in and of itself sounds like you're, you're meeting the goal. You're measuring up, you're delivering working software early and often because you're doing it every one to four weeks. However, Working software being delivered actually means in the hands of the end user. So it has to be deployed to your production product. And so while you may do a sprint every one to four weeks, sometimes you might bundle a few sprints um, to deliver a, a fuller release. And sometimes you're in an environment where the back end deployment process just kind of hangs up and takes a while. So we're going to take a look at what some of that looks like. So what we're looking at here is a cumulative flow diagram. And without getting into too much detail, it's simply a snapshot of time of how many items are in each workflow phase at any given time. And then you flow that out into a graph and you get something like this. When we talk about delivering software early and often, there are two key indicators. It's lead time and it's cycle time. Lead time is the entire period of which when an item first hits the backlog until it gets to production. Cycle time is the more nuts and bolts. When the team first grabs the item to start working on it, until it gets to deployment and production. This particular graph shows the team is working really, really well with once they get started on work and get it to, to production. Their cycle time is really good and smooth. The lead time is where the delays are. And when I look at this, my initial thoughts are, well, the backlog is really big, the blue part, the light blue part, and it continues to grow and get fatter and fatter as the graph moves to the right. And so what's happening here is work's coming in a lot faster than the team's able to produce. This could just simply be an issue of the team needs to be bigger in order to keep up with the flow. Sure, they could probably find ways to get more efficient, but depending upon how long this team's worked together, they may already be at their optimal capacity. And so Lead time then being this big just means that when somebody has an idea, it may or may not make it to production at all, or if it does, it might take a long time to get there based on priorities. And so that just may be something you want to look at. In this example, our backlog's not as big. It's actually kind of small and it remains relatively consistently sized, which indicates that the team's able to work on stories at about the same pace that they're coming in. And actually that's good because the team's right-sized. It's keeping up with the pace of work that's coming in. Where this team is having trouble, as you see in the ready for release and the deployed and, and the done phases, they're very choppy. There's no smooth continuous flow like the last graph. And so what this indicates is that once the team gets through testing the stories they're working on, they're stacking up into they kind of bundle up maybe the team's definitely not trying to deploy every month maybe they're not able to and so they need to queue up maybe a couple of sprints worth and so that done phase is queuing up a lot of work before it then moves all at once into this ready for release phase which then moves all at once into this deployed phase and that's why you see these big stair steps and plateaus well, what that does is it lengthens out your cycle time so the team can start working on things and getting them tested and go through regular one to four week sprints really well, but if that work can't make its way out to production, this is kind of what it looks like. And so that's the other extreme. And so in this case, actual work started takes longer to get deployed, whereas in the previous example, it's just that some stories may never actually make it into the development pipeline for a while to begin with. 
So what really defines success? Can users use it? You see, project schedules really aren't the way to measure success. Checking off tasks and milestones and activities off your project schedule means nothing to an end user. What do they want? They want to be able to touch it, feel it, use it, experience it. So your primary goal is to deliver software to end users. And if for some reason you can't do that as early as you'd like, the secondary goal would be to deliver working software to some test or staging environment where at least internal stakeholders can touch it, use it, and experience it, provide some feedback until you're ready to move whatever it is you're working on to production. So the end result, can users use it? How do you measure that success? Lead time and cycle times are probably your best way to measure that. Well, that concludes this digest. I always welcome your feedback, so please email me at the email address on the screen. Thank you.